All right, so I get a lot of questions about what kind of stuff I actually have in my Bash RC. You can get my Bash RC, of course, at my GitHub. Links in the description or link to my website, which has a link to it or something like that. But in this video, I'm going to talk about what kind of stuff I have in my Bash RC, what kind of stuff I might recommend for newer users to have in there, and uh, just other stuff about it. Um, I will say, over time, some people you will see on the internet will have bash rcs that are like a thousand lines long mine is 61 right now and i was looking at this just a second ago and there's probably a lot more i could clear out of this thing um but uh, i so i have the mentality of keeping it very relatively short but i'll tell you what i have in addition to the bash rc which i'll talk about in just one second i guess it's also important to talk about your bash profile so if you don't know if you're total newbie right so the bash rc is a list of commands and settings that are going to run every time you open the terminal your bash rc your a bash terminal or something like that or a terminal running bash however you want to think of it and the bash profile is basically what's going to run whenever you log in and bash is your default uh shell now one thing about profiles i will say i mention it because it's been a problem for me um so this is you can have a bash profile bash underscore profile you can have a just normal dot profile which runs whenever you log in on a tty and you don't have a bash profile or if you just have sa any kind of other shell or something like that you have z profile for zsh you have x profile if you log in uh, in a graphical environment and I find that that all gets very confusing so if you're like me and you often switch between login types or shells or something like that I find it very helpful to do the following and that is I really only have one profile file and then I have my bash profile X profile Z profile they all are just shortcuts they all, all are links that go to this one profile file so that's just one thing that I want to this has caused me problems since other people use my dot file so I just want to say that's what I do so anyway you're looking at my profile file here what do I have here um, I have a lot of environmental settings set my editor set my terminal browser um, a lot of these are specific to my own dot files um, I have like I set my bibliography file as an example uh, just because there are a lot of times I'm running commands and I want to output stuff to my bibliography file and that is this is like my LaTeX bibliography file where I have like everything all the sources that I cite um, and I want to output stuff to this file but it's too hard to write out the whole location so I just use a kind of environmental variable uh, you know whatever so I have stuff like that uh, I add my scripts folder to my path if you're a newbie right so your path or your path variable is a list of all the directories like um, from which you can run commands without uh, giving the whole location right so if I run rm I can run rm from wherever even though it happens that rm is specifically in user bin so by adding a, a directory to your path directory you don't have to write out the full location of the the um, uh, command or script or whatever that's just a basic note if you don't know some people don't I get a lot of questions about it so might as well mention it so other things I have here um, in my pro again this is the profile this is only gonna run when I log in uh, this just says if I log in on the first TTY and I'm not running i3 already start the graphical environment just because I don't want to have to type start start X myself because I pretty much always want the graphical environment um, if that doesn't run or whatever and this, the uh, profile continues I also if I'm uh, I'll be in the TTY mind you um, I also want um, I, since I'm a Vim user I want to have um, a caps lock remapped as escape so escape is very accessible so I can get back the normal mode very easily so I actually have it load let me just show you what this looks like I have this little uh, excuse me I have this little uh, file here, TTY maps, that lists out command, uh, key codes that I want to remap in the TTY. So I just have it switch, and basically just this just says switch caps and escape. So if um, so, whenever I'm in the TTY, whenever I press caps lock, it actually performs as an escape. So I like having that setting for Vim, and then I also load uh, the wall color scheme. Uh, in my TTY so that way even if I log in in the TTY I'm gonna have this kind of color scheme that's easier on the eyes uh, at least easier than the default as far as I'm concerned so that's what I have in my profile let's actually talk about the bash RC so again this is gonna run on login and the bash RC is gonna run pretty much whenever you bring up a 
um, uh, any kind of bash pro or terminal running bash. Uh, so basic settings I have here. One thing I found, um, you may have noticed this with a lot of terminals, that is if you type control S, that actually pauses your terminal and you can, um, well, I'm not, well, I might as well, no point in showing you what that looks like. You just, it pauses the terminal, it ceases all inputs and you can type whatever and nothing's gonna happen until you press control Q and then it's gonna input all those characters that you, you put in. Now this feature is, I mean, it's, it's standard in terminals, but I don't like having it just because uh, you know, a lot of times I'll accidentally press Control S or something, or maybe you might want to remap Control S to save in Vim or something like that. I find this, uh, so this command just disables Control S and, and Control Q, that's all that's for. I mean, it technically does other stuff, but in practice, that's what it does. Um, another thing I have that a lot of people like, every once in a while I hear someone who, who likes ZSH, uh, be like, oh, ZSH is so great, you can just type the directory name and it automatically CDs to it. I, I don't know why people say that, because you can do that in Bass by just putting in this setting. So if I want to CD to my articles directory, I can just type in articles, now I'm there. Great. Um, so that's that. And I also have my history size, my Bash history. I have it infinite. I why not? I figured uh, I've been doing this for a couple months now, and I find it pretty useful. So basically, all of the commands you log are going to be in bash history anyway, and this just keeps it from deleting old commands. Now, I've been using it for a couple months like this, and I want to say it's around, um, uh, how much is it? Uh, well, who cares? It's, it's like around 60 KB or something like that. Um, it, so it hasn't gotten too big. It's not going to get into megs and megs and megs. I figure I'm going to reformat my computer before that happens, but eh, doesn't matter. Got a big hard drive anyway, but yeah. So that, that's something you might want to contemplate. And something I don't have in my Bash RC, but I've thought about doing is you can also put time codes for all your commands in your Bash history. So if you're running a server or something, that might be really useful if something goes wrong and you want to check what kind of commands you've run in the past. Um, now one other, other thing here. So this is a bunch of lines here. Uh, this sets my, my uh, prompt here so it looks it has this particular color scheme and look uh, appearance but also what this if statement does okay so one thing I should probably explain one thing that I do is if you go to your etsy slash etsy password file you can change the home directory of different users and one crazy thing that I've done I don't think this is I don't recommend this as safe. It's never it's never bit me in the behind. But one thing that I've been doing is I've been using my root user. I've given it the home directory of my main user. So whenever I run as my root user, it actually uses the dot files of my main user, and that solves that clears up a bunch of headache in my workflow. I'll just say that. I don't know if it's a hundred percent safe. I don't know if I recommend doing it. But the reason I have this if statement here is if I switch to the root user, uh, what this if statement does is basically just uh, makes the prompt capital. And that's just so I know, so it's visu visually obvious if I'm running something as a root user, so I don't run any commands that I think are questionable. That's just what that does. Uh, and again, this only matters if you have, I mean, if you just want my prompt, you can just steal this part right here and throw it in your bash RC, but um, I just want to, to have the prompt different for the root user, and that that's why I do it, you know? Anyway, some uh, basic aliases and stuff. So one thing on aliases, uh, or, you know, aliases, if you don't know, they're just shortcuts for commands if you're a new user, right? So I have to type sudo pacman a whole lot because I'm often using pacman for stuff. And I just abbreviate that as P. So whenever, if I want to upgrade or something like that, I can just do P and then give it the options. Now, one thing, if you're a new user, and this applies, of course, to Arch Linux running Pac-Man or maybe Ubuntu or Debian running AppGit or something like that. If you're a new user, here's what a lot of new users will do. Okay, let me let me just show show you. All right, let's say you're running Ubuntu. Uh, okay, so sudo apt-get install. I know that's the 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 command for install a program so I'm gonna give an alias for it that is install or something like that or oh upgrade is you know I want to sudo app get blah 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 and what is it upgrade or whatever um, so the tendency of a lot of new users is to make aliases for very specific 
commands or subcommands specifically, because this is apt-get and then a subcommand, or however you want to think of it. Um, a lot of users will be tempted to make aliases for very specific commands, and I sort of recommend against that, just because, I mean, on one, well, two reasons. First off, you're not going to remember, or you'll gradually forget what the actual command is. Um, you're not going to remember, okay, it's sudo apt-get whatever. Uh, it's sort of, it's not something you actually have to remember. And also, when you want a specific setting to the command, you'll often have to not use your alias or do something weird. So when I, the reason I say this is m most of my aliases are mostly just abbreviations of things that um, general commands, like all of these are just commands, right? System CTL, Vim, uh, Ranger, stuff like that. I don't recommend making aliases for subcommands or commands with specific options unless you just always want those options. So I don't recommend you having an alias for upgrade, an alias for install program. I recommend you just learn the command um, and learn the syntax to that command. And if you want to abbreviate it, if you want to abbreviate the command itself in an alias or add in sudo, that's fine. But I think it's not a super good habit to put a whole bunch of the very specific command in an alias. I, I just, in my experience, keep in mind, I did this when I first started using uh, Linux or any kind of Unix system, and I just found that it was it, it wasn't a good habit. I didn't really uh, learn things as fast, and I got in the the mindset of not looking at the command itself and learning about it, but making aliases to do these specific things that I wanted, and that's not a good habit. So pretty much all of my aliases are abbreviations. Now, if you do want to put specific options, that's fine, but I recommend to do it only when you want when you always want those options. So I have an alias for make directory and I, I give it the P and the V options. So P means make a parent directory if, um, if that doesn't exist and V means visual, just give me feedback like the directory was created. Now I pretty much always want those um, options when I run make directory so I can have an alias for that. I don't mind that and I have some down here. I'll talk about those in a second. Um, but in general, just I, I recommend against making aliases for very specific commands that you're going to run in, in very specific circumstances. I recommend against that. Just use aliases to abbreviate or always enforce some options and nothing else. So similar to the make directory thing, uh, this is other options that I always like having. So ls, I give it a couple. Let's see, I think this is no quotes and this is human readable file. Uh, sizes and I also have ls have color auto and group directories first so group directories first means pretty much what it sounds like I mean let's say I uh, let's say I ls or yeah ls my documents latex folder or something like that uh, it's going to base first off there are subfolders here so it's going to list the folders first that's group directories first and um, you'll also see, well, there's not color here, but there's bolding that's different here. And that's part of that, excuse me. Um, so I really just always want color, or well, I should say color auto means if you output the terminal, it's going to appear as color. But if you output ls to like a file, it's not gonna put the color codes with that. And you don't want that. So I have color auto for that. And same thing with grep. Let's say I have, um, let's say I grep a file. Let's say grep. Well, we'll grep the sequence grep from my bash rc. All right, so that just automatically highlight. If you put color auto, that'll just automatically highlight all the uh, matches. Um, so that's something you might want to contemplate. And another thing I have is this isn't a cat command, but sometimes I want to cat out a, a file at, with the sort of file hi or syntax highlighting. Uh, and I have this command. Now, this isn't cat, but this is highlight, which is another command you can download which has the option of outputting stuff in particular syntax. So what you can do is, let's say I, um, let me think of a file that I could do this to. Um, let's say I run the alias ccat on scripts, uh, shortcuts.sh, and that's going to cat it out in effect. I mean, again, it's not really cat, it's really highlight, but it's going to output this file with all the syntax highlighted. Um, now, the way highlight works, I'll just go ahead and say that it's not going to work if you if I run it on uh, let's say my bash rc excuse me uh, my bash rc here um, it's going to say I don't know what syntax to run 
Um, so it's not going to, or actually maybe, maybe it'll work with force. I don't even know. Okay, yeah, no, it doesn't work, never mind. Uh, yeah, so, <laughs> so this will only work on files that have a particular extension and it can get the file type from the extension and assume the syntax. Otherwise, you have to manually give it syntax. And at that point, it's not worth it. But this is just a nice alias to have, just to have it, just because occasionally I want to output something in, with the file extension and see what it looks like uh, with syntax highlighting. Anyway, some other um, things that I have. Uh, so YouTube download. So if you don't know what YouTube DL is, I mean, it does exactly what it sounds like. You just run this command and run it on a YouTube link to either a channel or a video or a playlist and it downloads that channel or video or playlist. So I have, no, oh, excuse me. So I have a couple alias, aliases for it. I always want these settings. So add metadata means when I download the video, Put the, meta, put the metadata with the file, you know, be that the author name, the video title, and uh, stuff like that. Even, I think it even has like view count and stuff like that. And um, I also give it these other options. I is, let's see, what is I? I is uh, ignore errors. Yeah, so if like a video in a playlist mex messes up, it continues anyway. And C is for continue if you, um, if let's say like the download breaks in the middle. You can just re rerun the command and it's going to pick up where it started. And so I have YouTube YT for uh, YouTube DL and YTA for uh, download with audio. And and you might say, okay, well, this sort of uh, contradicts what you said before. And in a lot of ways, well, the idea behind it is I have to type all of this. I'm going to want this every time I run YouTube DL and it'd be a pain just to add in that extra option. So I just have two aliases for it. Uh, but I know YouTube DL by heart anyway, so that's fine. But you can check out the manual for it if you want to add in some other options or something. It has There is some other cool stuff. You can have it download thumbnails and stuff. Um, aside from that, I also have YouTube Viewer, which I just abbreviate as capital Y, capital T. And I have some other stuff. I don't actually use this stuff anymore. I used to have Speedometer. Um, actually, I might still have this installed. Let me check and see if... Uh, yeah, I still have Speedometer installed, and it just gives you... Uh, your well, it's not loading anything right now. It gives you your internet usage or whatever. So, oh no, I'm not on the Ethernet. That's why. <laughs> Never mind. Um, but I don't actually use this. Uh, and the only reason I had these aliases is because I'd always forget what profiles I had on whatever computer I'm using. So I just have them. Uh, okay, I got mail. Uh, I just have them in my Bash RC. Um, so the reason I have these here are not necessarily because I can't remember speedometer, but because I can't remember my. Uh, uh, whatever profiles I have um, on each of my computers. Anyway, Star Wars, uh, you can run that and see what happens. And the only other things I have is a couple copy commands for LaTeX. So I have LaTeX templates, and I sometimes just want to copy them to a new location to create a new file. So I have uh, shortcuts for that. Don't actually use this anymore. I should delete this. And um, uh, source my shortcuts file. If you don't know what that is, you can check out my video on my short. I think it's whatever last video I did on that. It was a couple of videos ago. And this thing right here, this is for downloading stuff from Sci-Hub. If you don't know what that is, so basically um, Sci-Hub, you can feed it a link to an academic article that's paywalled and it will... Sci-Hub will like uh, bypass the paywall, basically. And this command, you can usually give it a link and it'll download the PDF, but sometimes you need a capture or something so it doesn't actually work. So it's better to actually use Sci-Hub manually. Anyway, that's what I have in my Bash RC. I should say I have other stuff in my general environment, but that is stuff that I have in specific shell scripts that are in my scripts folder. Um, so you can check, again, you can check my GitHub out for that kind of stuff. But anyway, that's this has been a preview or, of my uh, Bash RC and Bash profile. You can check them out on the GitHub. Have any questions, ask them. And that, oh, perfect time to get a, a phone call. I'll see you guys next time.